A warm welcome to all of you and a heartfelt namaste. I and Radha would like to thank all of you for subscribing to our YouTube and our Spotify channels and writing in your comments and your suggestions there. If you haven't subscribed to our Spotify channel, please do so that you can listen to all the videos in an audio form anytime, any place. On the request of one of our subscribers who probably wants to be a pilot, has uh, and has requested us to give a, uh, to give the combinations for the same. Thank you. So here are the combinations that we bring forth for you, the combinations of being a good pilot. The being a pilot is not an easy job. It requires a lot of technical effort. It requires a lot of courage to move into that area. So let us see the areas that the houses that a pilot should have a very strong in his or her chart. For a pilot, the third house being the house of courage because it helps you overcome your fear of flying, of, of uh, you know, all sorts of negative thoughts that you may have in your mind. Apart from that, most importantly, the third house talks about moving away from home. It talks about journeys. For a pilot, uh, the best part or the worst part, as one may take it, is being away from home. They are always on the go. They are flying away from home all the time. So the third house has to be very active. The third house is also an airy sign and that denotes short travels, travels away from home. So all in all, the third house has to be very strong. Then we talk about the 10th house. If you're talking about pilot, being a pilot is a job profile. So there has to be a connect with your 10th house, 10th lord for you to become a great pilot. Then we move on to the 12th house. The journeys that a pilot has to undertake are never short. Even a one hour journey in a flight covers quite a distance. So the 12th house becomes very active for such people. When we talk about planets, the first planet that comes into our mind is Mercury. Why Mercury? Mercury is first and foremost the third lord of the Kalpurush Kundu. Secondly, Mercury is said to be the messenger. Mercury, one of the qualities that Mercury has is swiftness. We always talk in terms of supersonic speed. When we're talking about speed, we talk about supersonic speed, which we always will see from the third house. So all in all, the speed, the dexterity is given by Mercury. Then we have Rahu. The element of Rahu is uh, air. Rahu owns uh, the 11th house of the natural uh, Kundli, Kalpurush Kundli, that is Aquarius, which is again an airy sign. And Rahu shows something different. When Rahu shows a relationship with the 10th house, 12th house, it talks about working or uh, doing something which is different. In the 12th house, Rahu talks about international travels, international journeys also. Then one more planet is Venus. Venus gets exalted in the 12th house of the natural Kalpurush. It talks about exotic locale. It is the Karaka for travels which are into far off countries. For a pilot, moving away from home, uh, and constantly changing the locations because it does not mean that the pilot would always be on the same route. Their routes are often changed. So there is an element of changeability in their job. So moon becomes very important. For them. Now, the planets that are also very significant in a pilot's chart are Saturn and Mars. Why so? Because the combination of Saturn and Mars gives us the ability to do technical work. Both of it together show technical work. As a pilot undergoes training, he or she would also have to undergo technical training, learning what the components of a flight, of an aeroplane or a jet or whatever they are supposed to learn consists of. And they would have to sit through those exams also. So somewhere in the D1, D10 chart, also, and why do we take the D10 chart here? We'll take it up. This combination should come into prominence because the technical aspect also should shine through. So 
why D10? The D1 talks about a lot of things. The 10th house of the D1 chart is important, the third and the 12th. But these same uh, houses, when we're talking about the pilot, should also show effect in the D10 chart because D10 chart narrows down and talks about your karma, about your profession also. So today we are going to take both these charts, examine them in detail for two people. And one of them is Amelia Hart and the other is a French uh, pilot who did a lot of work technical work also, apart from being a pilot in that field. But before that, nothing is complete without the nakshatras. So the nakshatras, that hold importance when we talk about uh, a pilot are Revati, Ashwini, because these show travels. Travels at fast speed, Ashwini would give you great, great speed. Swati is the nakshatra of Vayudev. So I don't need to really say more. Adra nakshatra gives you the ability to travel and it also gives you an ability to try out your courage in whatever field that you want to. Apart from that, it is also the nakshatra of Rahu, which is a very important uh, component in one of our, and even Swati. So these two are very important when we talk about somebody's journeys. Punarvasu nakshatra is the nakshatra of Devi Aditi who's the mother of the sun goddess and of my sun gods and would travel the world with her children. So this gives you a lot of astral travel. This gives you a lot of travel. Now let us move on to the charts of Emilia Earhart and the <coughs> French, uh, French pilot, Louis Blairon. So when we are talking about Emilia Earhart, let us first examine her D1 chart. In her D1 chart, we see that uh, when we are talking about the houses, let's go step by step. The third lord is present on the love. The 10th lord, Saturn, aspects the lagna and also aspects moon and Venus. We talked about the fact that moon and Venus have to be aspected or rather moon and Venus have to uh, are a part of the planets that are involved when we talk about air travel the third uh, the third lord moon also aspects the 10th lord and when we talk about uh, the 12th lord mars mars is in the fourth house aspecting the 10th house and also aspecting the 10th lord again 10th lord saturn also aspects mars that means two criteria that we're talking about that is the 10th house and the 12th house combination. Apart from that, Mars and Saturn combination comes out in prominence. The two planets that we need to see further are Mercury and Rahu. Mercury is posited in the third house and is aspecting Rahu at the same time is being aspected by Rahu as it is on the Rahu Ketu axis. This talks about the D1 chart of Emilia here. Let us move to the D10 chart to get a very good clarity about her chart, about her chart, about her profession. We see that um, the third house houses sun. Sun is the fifth lord. According to the principle of Bhavad Bhavam, this is a good place for sun to be placed in. And that gives her an ability to travel all around and get a good name and fame. When we come to the 10th house, in the 10th house are the 12th Lord and the Lagna Lord and Rahu. So that again shows and this 10th house is aspected by Moon and Saturn from the 4th house. So it shows a great, uh, when we talk about the combinations of planets or the houses, this thing comes out very clearly when we see the D10 chart. Now, Venus and Mercury both aspect an exalted mercury aspect the 12th house and are also aspected by saturn the 10th lord and also aspected by jupiter the 12th lord so there's a complete clarity in the d10 chart as to how things come out in her chart because emilia your heart was one of those flyers one of those pilots who was she in fact she was the first lady pilot to 
circle the entire earth without any co-pilot. She did it all on her own. We can move forward to the chart of Louis Blerot. He was, um, he was a scientist who was totally engrossed with flying and later on became a pilot. He invented methods. He found out uh, many uh, parts that were very important later on that up for the commercial flights. So let's take his chart. First and foremost, we see that the third Lord Saturn is placed in the Lagna. And we see that the 12th Lord is also, uh, 12th Lord Mars is placed in the seventh house. There's a mutual aspect between Mars and Saturn. Venus is also, Venus and Mercury, both are also aspected by third Lord Saturn. And Mercury as the 10th Lord, is also aspecting Saturn. So we are, see a strong connect of 3, 12, and 10 in this chart also because Mars as the 12th Lord is sitting with Venus, Mercury. Talking about Rahu and Moon. Moon and Rahu are placed in the together in the 6th house. And as we know, they aspect the 12th house also. So this talks about the combination in the D1 chart. Another thing we need to be very uh, careful or we need to observe is that Saturn and Mars here are also are very much in aspect with each other. Even in Emilia year Hearts chart, we would see that even in the D10 and the D1, there's a strong connect between the, uh, D, uh, between the Saturn and the Mars. So when we move on to the D10 chart, and before I forget, uh, if we have to look into the... <clears throat> the nakshatra of Venus, then nakshatra of Venus in Louis's chart is that of Adra and the nakshatra of Mars in his, uh, sorry, Mercury in his chart is that of Punarvasu. So we see the nakshatra elements also playing out very beautifully. Moving further to Louis Berot. So in Louis Berot's uh, chart, of d chart, we see, again, let's take the Lagna. The Lagna has a combination of Mars and Saturn, primarily showing that technical aspect was very important for him. Again, Venus as the third and the 10th Lord is placed in its Mula Trikona sign in the third house of journeys, third house of thought process, and third house of creativity. So yes, he was an extremely creative person who knew how to conduct his journeys. And then when we talk about Mars, Rahu, Mercury, we need to see <clears throat> that Mercury has <clears throat> a strong aspect with Mars and Saturn on the Lagna. And when we are talking about Venus, Moon, and Rahu, they are in uh, the square with each other. Where we know that when planets are in squares with each other, when they are kindra in kindra to each other, they support each other. Finally, this Rahu is placed in the twelfth house, and twelfth house Rahu gives us travel. And sixth uh, Moon in sixth house gives you a discretionary mind, it gives you an ability to change as per circumstances, gives him a great deal of creativity and ability to change his plans, work on his plans with great effort. For those interested in being pilots, please do check them in your chart. And for those who have charts of pilots with them, please do put it in your charts in, that you have. Do write in your comments, do let us know how you found this video. Don't forget to subscribe and like to our channel. Thank you. Please hit so the bell icon for fresh updates. Don't forget to like, share and comment on the videos and please subscribe to our channel.